All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be checking out Black Yellow Luffy. Um, I've got this video broken down into three parts. First off, we're gonna be checking out this incredible alt art, excuse me, not alt art, but custom leader art card from Kaizoku Cards. We're gonna be checking that out first uh, because it just looks so incredible. It's kind of going to be like an unboxing style of a video we're going to look at. And then we're going to be going over three games of Black Yellow Luffy on the sim. And that's going to be an EB01 because we don't have it yet in, in the West. You know, or It's not on the Western client of the sim yet, so we got to do it with the East. So we do have EB, some EB01 cards in there as well. And then um, lastly, we're going to just, I'm, I'll show you guys the deck profile. We'll talk a little bit about that. So guys, let's dive into it. Got a lot to go over in this video. Some really cool, really fun stuff. So, like, first and foremost, I have to just kind of preface this video with this. Note, this is a deck that I ran. Um, this is a Blue Black Sakazuki deck that I've run in the past. And um, I don't run any alternate art cards. Zero. But notice in the top right corner here, I've got my uh, dice and then custom Dawn that I just kind of put together. I just made these Dawn myself. They're Magic the Gathering Dawn with, uh, or Magic the Gathering Lands with uh, your turn plus 1,000 at the bottom. And then at the top right here, I, I like to run custom leader art. I love supporting the community. I do have some custom uh, Dawn cards as well, but I love supporting the community. And I will leave in, in the comment section below the person who did this custom art, custom leader art. His name's Kaizoku Cards. I'll have him down in the uh, you know down in the comment section below if you want to check that out. And as usual, I'll try to put the timestamps down there so you guys can click around and move where you want to in the video. Okay, so so like I said, I just like to do it to do it this way where everything's um, base like basic version, but then. Let me blow this up while we're talking. Make sure the volume's off. So I just like to have everything in the basic version. So that way, you you know, I can sell the alternate art cards and help offset the cost of what I had to pay for. Look at that. I got I to gotta cut my thumbnail. Sorry, guys. Okay. So this is the package it came in real quick. Like I said, it'll be a quick little unboxing video. I'd already pre-cut it. Don't worry. It doesn't come open like that. <laughs> I pre-cut it. And um, check this out, man. So this is how it came. So I bought a... Um, how do you say it? A case. I'm zooming in a little bit with the camera here. I bought a case that has the the black yellow Luffy effect on it. So in other words, I can change out a full art leader card anytime I want to, and I'll still have this effect for black yellow Luffy. And check that foiling out, guys. That is incredible. Like absolutely, the texturing is on another level. Uh, the two, my two go-tos uh, for like the, I think who do the best custom leader stuff and the best custom Dawn stuff are Kaizoku Cards and Davidson TCG. If you know of any others out there, please link them down to me in the comment section below. This is where I like to spend a little extra money on is on custom leader cards. Again, look at that texturing, guys. Absolutely incredible. Now, real quick before someone asks, can you run these in tournaments? I think you should run. I think you can run these in tournaments uh, that are local. And they won't say anything. But don't try to take these to a treasure cup. Don't try to take these to a regional. But one thing that I do, um, and I'm not saying that, that it's like foolproof, but like like this is another one that I got from him. On this side, this is Black Yellow Big Mom, and this is the actual art for Black, Black Yellow Big Mom on the back, in case someone ever gets real you know snippy with you. Uh, okay, here's my big hands struggling to open uh, this this case because I'm just a big oof. All right, but we got it. Check this out. So. I got more than one liter, of course, right? Because like I told you, the text stays on the case. Y'all see what I'm saying? That The text stays on the case. So I can swap out these leaders however I want to, you know, and, and have it still be like Black Yellow Luffy, you know, in theory, right? Because because of the text on there. Here's one of them. How cool is that, guys? Like, look at the clouds. Do y'all see the, the, the actual texture of the clouds? <laughs> Hopefully that you know the the resolution improvement that I did to get to 1080p really shows this off in the video. And guys, look at the rainbow foiling, all that texturing in the background, the hockey like that that hockey ring around his face with it just oh, <laughs> in, insane. Guys, I, I love supporting local artists. This is a big part of the community for One Piece. It means a lot to me. Look at that lightning bolt, by the way. It actually has an effect on it, that lightning bolt there. Incredible. In, in his, in, I guess like it's his right hand. Yeah, if I'm looking at that correctly. And he got these hockey bolts everywhere. The, the hair, amazing. Absolutely love it. And then here's one that you saw on the front. Oh, look at that. J just, just incredible. Like I said, I, I can't get enough of this stuff. I cannot wait for there to be a Rayleigh leader. And then you guys know I'm going to have to get some kind of custom leader art for that. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So as you can see here, guys, this is what the case looks like. Incredible quality on the case as well. Like I don't even I don't even want to sell that short. And you know it just it just looks so nice. I got I gotta pause for a second or uh, mute myself just to cough. Give me one second, guys. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. And yeah, check that out. I mean, like I said, the, the quality, just incredible. Joku, if you're listening to me, that's the guy who does Kaizoku cards. If you you guys, you're amazing. I, I think he has like a team. I'm not sure. I wanted to do an interview with him one time, but he's been so busy. He's got a full-time job as like a dentist. So he doesn't have a lot of time to do, st you know, stuff like interviews and whatnot. But man, I think he has like a little team that he commissions art to. And I think he's basically like the main person that like, you know, commissions it out and has it printed for him. I don't know the full process. I'll have to uh, I'll have to pick his brain later on it. But look at that. See, if I want to change out the leader, it's that easy. Like I just put on, I put the, the full art leader card behind it. And then, like I said, and what I like to do, I tried to show you all a little bit. Let me, um, let me pause this real quick and blow up my camera. Uh, y'all give me just a second. Sorry guys. It's so like on one side, you can't even see. Uh, I have really bad lighting right now. I'm sorry guys. But like notice this is like a, a different, uh, this is the Linlin version, the black yellow Linlin version, and on the back I have the actual one. If someone tries to raise a fuss about it, okay. Let me uh, drop down my camera again. There we go. Okay, back to the video. <clears throat> so again, like I said, just the quality, the texturing. These look better than the cards from Bandai, guys. Like, I mean, like legitimately. I gotta call one more time. Sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. Awesome, amazing. I can put, and this one probably looks the best to be honest. Like, and to be fair, this one probably looks the best for like what a card should be, right? Like, it just looks like that should be the card almost to me. And I'm not saying the black yellow version doesn't look good. I think this is almost the end now. I just lay them all out. Oh no, no, no! At the end, I showed this, this, this part so amazing. Watch this, guys. I, I take a light and I go over the top of them and like show the, the different colors of the foiling. It just looks absolutely incredible with uh, under under the lighting. I mean, they look incredible as is, but when you hit them with the right light, they just look unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, I know you can't use these at big tournaments. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> that is, that's amazing. Especially the one, I actually really like the one on the far right when you hit it with the right light. They all look good. Again, I can't stress that enough. But the one on the far right, like watch the lightning bolt when I get close to it with the light. Man, that's nice. That is, that is really nice. And for that, you know, the texturing's different on each one of them. There's more of a circle pattern on the one on the right. The one in the middle has circles for the clouds and then like a ray pattern behind it. And then the one on the left has like the ray pattern as well. Okay, that's it. That's enough of that. I'm done drooling over that. Again, Joku, if you're listening, man, you're the man. This stuff is absolutely incredible. Can't get enough of this. Can't get enough of this. Okay, on to the black yellow um, games on the sim. Sounds off. Let's go 2x speed and let's dive into this. Okay, we got to put the, the glasses on real quick. <laughs> so, someone asked me in a, in a video, in, in like in the comment section of the video, they're like, what's up with you with your glasses? I just like to have them off for the video, take the glare off. I think it looks a little bit better. Okay, enough about me. So we're going against Red Purple Law here. Um, I don't know all the matchups just yet for, for like uh, what Black Yellow Luffy's like the best at or the worst at. But so far, he's felt pretty good against like the entire the entire field that I that I've play tested against, and it's just the sim. I get it; it's not like the best competition in the world. Um, but yeah, uh, right here, I don't get like the most incredible. It doesn't. It, I'll say this: Black Yellow Luffy has kind of a weak point on turn four, or excuse me, the four dawn turn, because five dawn is where a lot of your big cards are, and if you only have three dawn, it's not a big deal. Just put all your dawn on your leader and swing, or or use your flampy searcher, or whatever. But four dawn is a very weak turn for this deck. I found. Okay, so he hits me with Trafalgar Law, making me trash a card from my deck. But I'm not too worried about that, right? And I'm okay with him bottom decking my card there. He's down to three dawn. I'm just gonna. So right here, I think I bait out. I, I want to get him to stay low on dawn, right? Because he needs to keep answering my board, or he's just in trouble. Okay, so swing six. Got five dawn left. I'm just gonna play out a Luffy. And I'm, I think I draw a card with him. He has an effect to draw a card and go plus 2,000 for the turn. You trash the top card of your life, draw a card from the top of your deck, and he gets plus 2,000 power until the start of your next turn. So the, the card is very good. Like, it's a very powerful effect. And that's hard to deal with, right? An 8,000 power character, Law has to get them down to 3,000, and he'll be able to. So he took off 2,000 there, took off another 3,000 with the Gordon, and that's fine. He's down to 2 Dawn. I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. Because as soon as I start dropping, now that bottom clay we'll talk about in a second, but as soon as I start dropping my, um, you know, 
my characters that buff my leader, it's basically all over for them, you know, for, for law. And if you guys have any comments or questions, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comment section below. Because I know this is a new deck for a lot of people. So if you don't know what's going on, just, you know, message down in the comment section below. Me or someone else will get to you uh, quickly. So I played down the two cost ace, which allows me to play the five cost ace from the top of my life. Did the same thing with the Sabo, allowing me to play the Sabo out of the top of my life. And when I do that, every time I do it with the little two cost guys, that gives me plus 2,000 power to my leader until the start of my next turn. Then you throw in Gecko Moria to the mix, and you just keep recycling these effects. And the way I'm getting, for those who don't know, the way I'm getting these five cost characters into my life, I'm doing that with the leader's effect. Luffy's leader effect allows you to, you have to attach two Dawn to Luffy, <clears throat> excuse me, you attach two Dawn to Luffy, and then you trash a card from your hand, and then you add two cards from your trash or life, or uh, hand, from your hand or your trash to your life that costs five. It has to be a character, an exactly five cost character. Okay, so he's starting to gobble up my board a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not super concerned as long as my cards go to the trash. And one thing that I probably... I was going to say, I, I kind of just need to let this go here. But I can counter out two to, to put on more pressure. But yeah, that's the better cause to let it go there. So here we go. Gecko Moria with Black Yellow Luffy is the perfect match made in heaven synergy. Uh, you, you attach two Dawn to your leader. And then with the remaining eight Dawn, you play out Gecko Moria. It allows you to do what I just did on the board there. Playing out your five cost Rush Ace. Playing out your five cost Blocker Sabo. Your whole board's protected. You're drawing two, trashing two. And now you're a 9,000 power leader massive absolutely and you get to swing for eleven thousand because you have two dawn on you i probably should not have trashed the gecko moria there i think i should have actually trashed the um the ace the the, the two cost ace in my hand but i was kind of i was kind of worried i wasn't sure if he'd be able to you know take me out this turn like if he could have somehow i don't know that's just crazy to even think that he could have done that right because he has four dawn left he can go seven on two well no actually if he could have somehow removed my blocker he might have been able to ko me if i didn't keep the 3k in hand I draw a Flampy for the turn. Now it's time to just... Yeah, and he, so he, he uh, taps out there. Whoops. So at this point, excuse me, I'm just going to swing into him and win the game, right? He, he only has a uh, 2k counter in hand, no life left, and he doesn't have a blocker. The game's over. Okay, so good good game there against uh, Red Purple Law. And that was running the Kid and Killer card, the new uh, Kid and Killer card that's really powerful. It's a 4-cost 7,000 power rusher. So, you know, seems very good. Okay, next up here, we got Blue Black Rebecca. Man, you know, with Sakazuki out of the format for a little while in, in the East, I, I'm wondering if, we, if we'll see Rebecca pop up over in OP07. Hard to say, though, guys, because now we're starting to see Red, Blue, uh, Rebecca pick up steam. There's so much going on over there in the East. I'm sorry, guys. I, I know a lot of people don't want to hear about that stuff. They just want to know what's going on in the West. I respect that. But I'll try to stay focused here. But I think it, there is a point for us playing Black, Yellow, Luffy right now because that's coming out in literally two and a half weeks. So, um, so yeah, it is what it is. All right, so, so right here, I'm just going to load up four, swing nine at the leader. This is almost undoubtedly gone through. Unless they want to give me three cards, I'll take three cards. But the, the thing about... Um, <clears throat> do I, yeah, I got on to speed. Like I said, the thing about your four dawn turn, like if you're going second with Luffy, if you have a four dawn turn, it does not feel good. Uh, there, you just have to swing nine at leader almost. I mean, I guess you could, if you have a garp, an extra garp or an extra flampy or something, you can get some value through that. But it really, again, it's just, it's almost like a feels bad type thing. Okay, so I'm going to swing six here, and I think I play out my Luffy because I need to start drawing cards from my life. Rebecca doesn't want to attack life until she has full control of the board, and I don't want her to have that. On paper, I think Rebecca has a favorable matchup against Luffy, but I could be wrong about that. It really depends on how much um, how much bottom decking they're running. Like, I don't care about Truno Bastardo, and I don't care about being KO'd by Kairos. That's all fine because I can recycle it from my trash later in the game with Gecko Moria and so on and so forth. But if they start bottom decking my cards, well, now we got a problem, right? Houston, we have a problem. Nice. I got my Gecko Moria. That was the one last piece of the puzzle I was missing. I was hoping to get that as soon as possible. I swing eight with my uh, Luffy, taking a card from life, drawing a card from, from my deck. Play out ace. Now I'm down to two life. I can swing 7k with rush with ace now. And here I'm going to do a top five search with my with the, the new one cost event searcher. See what we get. <clears throat> I think I pick Sabo. Yeah, I, I, you pretty much always need to go with Sabo, the, the five cost uh, black blocker Sabo. It's just too important to get you into the late game where you, where you can go from there. 
because theoretically, even if they do remove Sabo, like say they hit my Sabo with like a uh, 3,000 worlds, right? Well, that's fine because that costs you four Dawn. So now with my leader being 9,000 power because of the effects you're getting there, you know, that you're using to get him there, I should be fine. That's, that's the theory. Like in theory, that's how it works. Okay, I'll tell you what. If I got hit with a pudding right now, I'd probably just quit the game because uh, pudding would be absolutely devastating in, in this exact situation here. It, it would be game changing. I, I still don't know how that card's printed. I'm sorry, guys. I know I rant and rave about it every time. I mean, I do understand why. By the way, I'm not I'm not totally oblivious to that, but I, I'm very I'm very uh, annoyed by that card being in the game. So I had to counter out of the Leo there. He hound blazed my my um, my I think it was my Sabo to the bottom of the deck. Uh, it was some card. He he hound blazed one of my cards to the bottom there, which is a cool tech card to run in uh, blue black Rebecca, right? Because she has a lot of cost reduction. She can she can use hound blaze very very easily even though she can't search for it she can unless she runs like brand new or something but with her leader effect she can't search for hound blaze but she can use it very efficiently okay so uh what, what do i get here oh was that a flampy yeah i think i did flampy there to get one of the cards out i, I had one card left in my life i used flampy to draw that and draw a card from my from my deck so that way i can get zero life and that's when luffy's leader effect turns on so I was able to put those cards in my life, play out their two cost cards. I'm a 9,000 power leader this turn. My, my Luffy's a five cost 8K this turn in case they can somehow tap him down. And my Sabo just gave everybody the, you know, cannot be KO'd effect for the turn. And, and now it's his turn. And next turn, I want to follow up with the Gecko Moria, followed by a next turn Gecko Moria. You see what I'm saying? Like, it just keeps getting this value back. Now, he did just 3,000 worlds, my Sabo. That does not feel good. He, this guy's running Houndblaze and 3,000 worlds. Seems good. I, I think that is that's probably the way to go with Rebecca. I, I mean I don't know. We'll have to see. Okay, he tried to to take out my guy with with his um with Brooke, but, but that doesn't work. That obviously does not work. So he cannot even swing. Notice this, guys. He can't even swing at my life right now because my leader is nine thousand power. That that's the real strength in this deck. It's just establishing that and then just repeating. You know, rinse and repeat over and over again with your with your Gecko Morias. And you might be thinking like, well, yeah. Well, how consistently can you do that? Uh, the answer is very consistently <laughs> because number one, you're drawing cards with your 2K counters. In this deck, your 2K counters are actually so, so important. You're, you're using, um, you see them in my hand right now. It's the Makano and the Flampy down there in between the two, two call Sabos. Flampy is a one cost, draw your top life card and draw a card from your deck. And then the Makano draws a card from the top or bottom of your life and then you get to arrange your life. That is massive in this deck. It allows you to draw cards like crazy, set your life. And then Saba just helps you cycle like it always does. <clears throat> so, so I've got Rebecca in, in the infinite blender right now. Rebecca has to somehow KO me this turn by swinging all in. But I go two 2Ks and a 1K to get out of like a massive attack. And he 3,000 worlds my blocker, right? Like he, he did that correctly. Let me go back real quick. Whoops. Go right to... So I've got Sabo down. So like I said, so he bottom decks my Sabo. And then he swings in here for, what was it, 14? Or what was it? It was 13K. Okay, well, that's literally just a 2K, a 2K, and a 1K to get out of. And he had to use that card. He had to use 3,000 worlds. But I even had another 2K and a 1K in hand. Like, So you see how, how resilient this deck can be. Okay, one more game, guys. Then we'll do a little, uh, we'll check out uh, the deck. So this one's a mirror match. Uh, just Again, these are just random players on the sim, guys. I have no idea who these people are. Uh, this isn't ranked because this is in the EV01 uh, format and all that. Okay, let me turn the speed up real quick to 2x, and we're all right now. We're good. <clears throat> so, mirror matches are very weird. No matter what leader you're running, the the hang on, let me move this real quick. Okay, there we go. Leader mat or excuse me, um, mirror matches can be very very strange. But I will say this: I have what I need in my hand. I have my sabos. I have my aces. I have the ways to bring them back with the two cost cards. I have a Makano. I have my Gecko Moria. I'm feeling very good about this draw. This is a very solid draw. So Makano, I get to draw a card for my life, set my top life. I saw that it was a Sabo, so I'm going to play out my two-cost Sabo, get that into my trash, give my leader plus 2,000 for the turn, swing, and then attach a Dawn, swing eight at his leader. Now, some people might be thinking, like, why would you help him out like that? Mainly because he just used Tayori. I mean, that that's, I, I don't know. I guess that's the, the only way I can say it. Yeah, because look at that. He had Ace. Now, check this out. He almost could have won the game there, but he can't now because he can't swing with his Ace. He has three life. In order for Ace to get Rush, I got three Gecko Morias, by the way. Uh, in order for Ace to get Rush, you have to have two or less life. You do, not your opponent. You have to have two or less life. 
Okay, so um, this is not a, a great situation here because I don't have, you know, I, I need to I need to gain life this turn, but I also need to make sure that I can, you know, survive his his attack coming at me. So uh, right here, have to just get ace down. I just have to basically sacrifice this ace so that I don't lose this next turn here. There might have been another way to go about that, but I was expecting to not draw three Gecko Morias in a row. Having the one Gecko Moria, that was great, right? That was awesome. But three Gecko Morias, not exactly ideal. Not, not, not this early in the game, at least. Okay. So right here, I'm like, yep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose an ace. There's pretty much no way around it. You know, I can counter out of one of these. So let's see what he does. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have to decide for a second here. Oh, did I did I counter out? Did I miss something? I'm sorry. Let, let me go back, guys. I feel like something. What what did he did I miss something? Oh, he swung six into seven. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't paying attention, guys. I was rambling too much. So he's a, he was six thousand power as his leader, and he swung into seven. So nothing happened. Okay. So right here, I kind of I'm kind of licking my chops here. Like, whew, he's at one life, and he only has a, a five thousand power leader. And he only has three cards in hand. So in my, my head, I'm thinking, let's try something here. I go seven at face, see what we get. He probably wants to take this one because of his leader's effect anyway. So, But, but at the same time, if he can counter out of this, he should, and he does, because he sees two other attacks on the board that are potentially you know threatening lethal if he doesn't block these, or if I have a way to get around his blocker. So I do a top top five search with that thing, right? That, uh, that the event card. Then I get a Sabo. And I'm like, man, if I can just hit um, Ace, I can win this game. I get Ace off of the Sabo. Like I did this, the Sabo search there. So I'm like, I'm trying to do the math. We're like, wait a minute, how do I do this? So I swing six at face. He, t I think he takes this one. Then it's like, okay, play out um, this guy, Ace, swing seven at life. He has to give me Sabo at this point. But look at this. Now, I think he could have, let me see something. No, he couldn't have got out of it. Since I played... It in that order. So Ace swings in for seven. He only has a 2k counter in hand and one blocker left. That's going to eat up the blocker. But using that effect gave my, my leader plus 2,000 for the turn. Really loving the way this deck plays out. Loving everything about it. Loving the colors. It, I just can't wait. And now, of course, my new little custom uh, leader uh, that I got for it. Okay. So quick little deck tech here. I don't have a whole lot to talk about. Let me uh, move my, fa my face one more time. Uh, just another... Deck text, you know, at the very end here, I just want to talk about, you know, how everything's working. Everything is a four of. Now, the Sabos, the Gecko Morias, the Flampy, the Hiyori, and the Makano, almost everything in here is a, a, an absolute staple. I would almost say there's, I don't want to say there's no room for improvement because it just, it plays out very consistently like this. But once we get access to OP07, instead of running these two Sabos, We'll probably go down these two Sabos and down one Luffy for the new um, the new Ace card coming. Or excuse me, the, the new uh, Luffy card. I'm going to show you guys what that is real quick. Y'all give me just a second because I, I do have that up over here. Because ultimately, that that will probably be the the thing that pushes this deck into S tier. I feel like I mean I could be wrong. You know, people are more than <laughs> you know. If, if you want to disagree, you absolutely can. But this is the card I'm talking about. <clears throat> Oops, there we go. This card here, Monkey D. Luffy, this is coming out in OP07. It's a 5 cost 6 case. So that's perfect, and, and it's a 1k counter. It's perfectly what we want for our little Luffy shenanigans. Activate main, trash this character. If you have 2 or less life cards, which we should have, KO up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost of 4 or less, then draw one card. Trigger, KO of 4 or less. So it's kind of everything we need it to be, right? It's everything we want for that slot to be instead of this Sabo. Now, yes, technically this Sabo does hit a 5 or less, which is very, very good. However... The other, the, the other Luffy is just a little bit more consistent. And generally speaking, we only want to use this Sabo, the, the two-call Sabo that gets our that you know that buffs our leader and allows us to play a Sabo. We only want to use it to, to get this Sabo into play. Because it gets <clears throat> excuse me. It allows us to fill up our trash with cards that aren't necessarily needed at the time. It's a blocker and everything. It's just everything we need. Whereas Monkey D. Luffy, we could probably go down to three of these and then go up uh, to three of the uh, of where the Sabo is and put that as the four cost, uh, the five cost Luffy. It's just what I think I'm going to do from there on. Um, but that's about it, guys. You know, everyone, I think everyone kind of knows what these cards do. If you have any questions, just, just ask in the comment section below. But I'll, I'll just lay it down very simply here at the end. 
these five cost cards of Ace, Luffy, whoops, Luffy, and Sabo, they are the gas in the deck. And what allows them to be so strong with the leader, the leader lets you put them into your life when you have zero. Like, read this card real quick, guys. Like, pause the video and read this card and see what it does. You're going to trash a card from hand when you have zero life. And you're going to put two of these five cost characters face up in your life. Then, when you play these two cost guys that are corresponding to which one you have, like Luffy grabs Luffy, right? Sabo grabs Sabo. Ace grabs Ace. It allows you to, to cheat them into play from your life. And while it seems like, oh, I'm going to be super vulnerable, you're, you're somewhat vulnerable, I guess you could say, because you have zero life. But it gives your leader plus 4,000 power for the turn if you do two in one turn. Or even if you can only do one in one turn, you have a 7,000 power leader. You know, that's very, very powerful. And then your 2K counters are massive because they're allowing you to manipulate your life. Flampy, look at this. Pause and read this card, guys. Tr draw a card from the top or bottom of your life and draw a card from your deck. That's a one cost draw two in this deck. Makado, this is a one cost draw one from your life and then arrange your life so that you can cheat these guys into play early if you have the, the combo worked out in your hand. You've got Searchers for Consistency and Three Brothers Bond and Monkey D. Garp. And then to bring the whole package together to reinforce it and make it that much stronger, you have Gecko Moria. Because for those who don't know, this, this character is not color locked. You can, you can bring back black, yellow, green, whatever color cards are in your deck. You can bring back any color card and it's up to a four cost and up to a two cost. So it doesn't matter if you grab two two costs because that's what you're going to do to start generating the cycle and generating the incredible amount of value. All right, guys, that's about it. Uh, please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. I'm going to have to bring down in the comment section. I'll, I'll try to leave something to uh, to link to Kaizoku cards where I got that amazing. We got we got to bring that thing up one more time, guys. Look how incredible that is. That that art is just spectacular. So uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you've not already. And uh, if you got any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to ask them down in the comment section below. And until next time, guys. Peace.